Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Week. Couple of Utah State field goals followed by a Jordan Lynch touchdown run. We move into the second half of the San Diego County Credit Union Point Setia Bowl here at Qualcomm Stadium. We welcome you back inside our broadcast booth. Coach Mike Bellotti, Joe Davis, one point lead for the favored NIU, 23rd rank, but they got to feel like they could have a lot more than a one point lead. I think so. Utah State controlled the first quarter and the start of the second, but only got two field goals out of it. Jordan Lynch has converted on third down, throwing the ball very well. I think they got to open up the running game, though, within the second half. I think they have the momentum. Utah State, both defensive have played very well, which is sort of a surprise. They've held that uh, NIU offense in check. NIU won the opening toss, deferred to the second half. So one of the nation's top offenses will get it to begin half number two. Paris Logan. Trying to get to the edge, but can't. Kara Capuano checked in with Matt Wells, and we check in with her. Stay together on defense and find a way to score more on offense. That's the goal for Utah State. And how appropriate that Aggies head coach Matt Wells came out of the tunnel with his arms around two offensive leaders, center Tyler Lawson and right guard Jamie Marcosian. He said the way they score, run the ball more productively this second half. Well, that was the message from him. Really all week leading into this game, Kara, was that if they were going to have a chance, they were going to have to run the football to give Garrettson a little more comfortability throwing it. Lynch comfortable throwing this one, but Sweet dives and pulls it in. Picked off by Brian Sweet. And what a start to this second half for Utah State. That ball was thrown just a second late. It was a long throw. From the hash to the other sideline is hung a little bit too long. Great play by the defensive back. Broke on the ball, recognized the route, did a great job. All of a sudden, different game here. Different complexion for Utah State. Jordan Lynch had been picked off only five times over the first 12 games of the season. That's his third pick in the last game and a half. And it's Brian Sweet with a team leading fifth interception of the season. Utah State. With the ball at the 31. But Utah State is telling themselves right now, we need a touchdown, not another field goal. Garrettson off of the zone read with a rare keep into the arms of George Rainey. Utah State in that first half had just 114 yards. Kara mentioned the ground game. They got 58 on one play from Joey DiMartino. On the other 14 run plays, negative four. Yeah, not very consistent. And they've got to try to find a, the key, the answer. It's getting north and south with their running back, Stingley. Not, not sideline to sideline plays. And IU brings four. Van Leeuwen with a reception. Running through the tackle of Paris Logan for a first down. Travis Van Leeuwen with his first catch of the game. A senior from Provo having a career season. And he's a big target. 6'3", 195 pounds. Has range. And he has, when we talk about a big target, he can get vertical. But he's really a possession type receiver that just out muscle any DB in the proximity. First down from the 20. Garrettson pumps the bubble, looks into the end zone where the coverage is good. So just toss it at a bound smartly, but it being a first down play, a second and ten. That's something he didn't do last game against Fresno State, and it cost him. He rarely tried to throw the ball away. He tried to wait and have something develop. Much smarter play down there. Save the down and distance. Save field goal range, whatever the case may be. But I'm telling you what, from the sidelines, every man on the field now is saying, we got to get in the end zone. DiMartino, nothing there. As Boomer Mays, the middle linebacker, who did not play well in the MAC championship game, and the staff said he'd be the first to tell you. Staff also said he'd have to play well tonight. They need a great game from him, and that was a great play right there. That's running from your middle linebacker position on the stretch play, beating the block, and taking down a power back. 
And now Utah State, one play away from having to settle for another field goal attempt. Third down and 10. Garrettson well protected on the money for Van Leeuwen, and it's first down and goal for Utah State. Beating Paris Logan in the dig round for 14 yards. And we talked about a possession receiver. This is the definition. Watch him set this up, runs to the outside, then gets inside position, uses his body to shield the defender, gather in the football. Tied a career high with six catches in the Mountain West Championship. His first two catches tonight come on this opening drive of the second half. Now to the pistol. DiMartino. Down to the five, Deshaun Durant. Safety was down in the box with the ball inside the 10, made the tackle, second and goal. One of the reasons they want the running game to go, they don't have a mobile quarterback, they've got to rely on the running game, setting up the play action where they can contain and control the rush. If they straight drop back, it puts a lot of pressure on the offensive line to protect. O-line, the strength of this team, that's one of the spots where they've remained mostly health healthy. Trying to protect the freshman Garrett's and it works out of an empty set. Has time, into the end zone, touchdown Utah State! It's Brandon Swindle! And the Aggies jump back in front, taking advantage of the takeaway. They talked about Swindle being under the radar, but needing a good game from him because they lost Reynolds earlier this year. A lot of focus on Nats and then Van Leeuwen, but he was the guy they thought could, could make some plays for them that might surprise the NIU defense. Extra point coming from Nick Diaz. Utah State finally in the end zone with Brandon Swindle. First play of this second half, Jordan Lynch gets picked off by Brian Sweet. And it sets up Utah State's first touchdown of the game. Brandon Swindle from Daryl Garrettson, Aggies lead. Garrettson to Swindle for the touchdown and Utah State now in front, looking to win back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time in program history. Northern Illinois trying to rebound from the disappointment of missing out in the BCS by one game in that MAC championship loss to set a school record with 13 wins. Garros Turner ripped down by Vigil. Now the Capital One Bowl Week continues tomorrow with a triple header on ESPN. It all starts at 2.30, Marshall and Maryland. Marshall looking for its first 10-win season since 2002, led by Rakeem Cato, who's a heck of a quarterback you don't hear a ton about. At 6, Syracuse and Minnesota and the Texas Bowl, and it all finishes at 9.30 Eastern when BYU takes on Washington. It's a couple of turnovers, both from Jordan Lynch, one fumble, one pick. And that's unusual, and I'll tell you what, we all know in bowl games, we talk about it, it's just like the first game, turnovers are key. So they go back to what they're built on, that's the ground game, and Utah State shows off what it's built on defense. Vigil and Zutera combined to bring down Spencer. Gap integrity inside, guys with their head in the right seam, keeping the arm free, forcing the ball to go laterally where you get your pursuit to catch the ball carrier, no game. Northern Illinois, the most prolific rush offense in MAC history, averaging just three yards a carry so far. On second down, Lynch throws low. On to Duran Brown, bird in coverage. Lynch and NIU looking at a quick third and ten. Didn't look like the quarterback and receiver were in sync that time. I think he felt like Deron Brown was going to run that route a little shorter, or he's a little bit worried now. And when you get worried as a quarterback, you're not going to throw the ball all the way, afraid of the interception. You're not going to complete very many passes. Pressure coming. It's picked up. But it leaks through. It's a coverage sack. And the beneficiary is Nick Vigil. The red shirt freshman from Plain City, Utah, emerging as a big time player for this Utah State D. 
And you're absolutely right when you talk about a coverage sack. Look at this. Nobody opened down the field, got a free safety. Everybody locked up man to man, forces a quarterback to hold the ball. Rush is eventually going to get there. First punt tonight for Weedle was 17 yards, shanked it off the side of his foot. And the dangerous JoJo Natson waiting back at his own 46. They're going to directional punt from him all night, and they keep it away from him here with a punt of 48 yards. That Utah State defense, top 10 in the country, getting to the Heisman finalist Lynch. They've picked them off and sacked them already in the second. The 2013 San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live mas. And Cadillac. Talk about a destination bowl. San Diego. These two teams taking advantage of all it has to offer, including SeaWorld, the very first SeaWorld. Open here in San Diego in 1964. Coach Wells is second from the right there, getting splashed. Looking for a bowl win, trying to give Utah State back-to-back -back bowl wins for the first time in program history. First down and 10 from the 35, and the drive begins with a DiMartino run. Rides the block of Jake Simonich for nine yards, and it's second and one. And they, one of the things, the way to be successful on third down is to have a great first down play. Get to manageable second downs and third downs. And when you're second and one, you got a lot of options in the bag. You can throw it, you can run it, you can take the shot. So don't be surprised. I think they feel pretty good about third and one if they get there. Because they didn't run it well in the first half, very rarely were they in that third and short. Second and one, and back to DiMartino. Boy, uh, Big time tackle there for Dominique Ware, fifth year senior safety, or DiMartino was into the clear. Yeah, there was not a lot of other defenders. If he missed, made that miss tackle, this is truly what you call a shoestring tackle, grabbing him by the foot and pull him down. Hard to run without your feet for those running backs. Ware dealing with a foot injury lately. This time of year, just about everybody's dealing with something. Both these teams have played 13 games for the conference championship game. Garrettson under pressure, steps away from Windsor. And will slide and get drilled. I'm surprised the flag didn't come out with Michael Santa Catarina flying down to Garrettson, who was giving himself up. Yeah, he's definitely giving himself up. Let's see where the contact took place. Great job there. Unblocked guy coming off the edge. He gets down, it gets down there. I tell you what happened there. He did not strike with it. Uh, you know, his helmet, Crowder's helmet, did not strike him high. So I think they said let him play. We've seen a few times tonight guys doing the right thing as far as form tackling, largely because of what has happened with the targeting rules this year. There's absolutely, there's absolutely no question that the targeting rule has changed and will continue to change college football. Here's another look to just take and see. Now, I think I think that's actually legal. I think there's nothing in the college rules that says if he's going down, as long as he's a ball carrier. I know that in the pro level, yep. once he does that, you can't touch him. The key there was that he didn't get the neck or shoulders or uh, neck or head of Garrettson, who was a defenseless player by definition when he goes into the slide. Then it would have been targeting. The Martino stutter steps and gets shot down. So they're going to be looking at a fourth down and two from the 45 with George Rainey leading the charge defensively for the Huskies there. Now, how comfortable are you fourth and two? Well, you can punt the ball, and their punter does a great job of putting it down there, which it looks as if they're going to do. But I'll tell you what, the NIU defense is going to stay on the field. They're, that sign means safe, safe, safe. Make sure they do not run the fake, play defense first, make sure that they punt the ball. Benchard's been good tonight. Pin one inside the five and then very closely missed out on pinning another one inside the five. Matt Williams back to return this one. Good high punt from Bentrude. 33 yards to the 14. Well, NIU is one win away from what was almost a sure thing. Trip back to the BCS.
But they face a Bowling Green squad that really rolled from the start of that game. Matt Johnson was 21 of 26 through the year as Northern Illinois gave up 574 yards total in that game and dropped their first game of the season. Bowling Green went to the MAC title and snapping Northern Illinois' 26 game MAC winning streak and keeping NIU from another BCS bid. And Jordan Lynch had two turnovers in that game, as he does tonight. Maybe that's not a good sign. Bubba to Lewis, who got a block from Brown. But Tay Glover Wright did a tremendous job after getting blocked still to make the play. That's what you love as a defensive player. It's not about getting blocked. It's about getting up off the ground after you've been blocked and still making the play. Defensive, co every coach loves that kind of effort. That's the first time Glover Wright has ever played DB. He was a Juco quarterback. Second down and eight. Lynch will take off. A good tackle by Nick Vigil. So now third down and a little less than five. Nice eyes and awareness by Jordan Lynch in the pocket. Made the play fake, saw nothing was there. Not only got that film, but protected his legs. One of the things he does a great job of is protecting the football, and he does that through protecting his own body from hits and blindside hits. And he's one of the best I've seen do that. Third down and four. Four-man rush, picked up. Coverage is good again, though. For the DBs, the story in this second half for Utah State so far. And Kyler Fackrell brings him down. It's fourth down. We talked about one of the ways we thought that they could do this, if they could play man-to-man -man on the outside and force Jordan Lynch to beat you with his passing skills all the time. That was not going to be in their best interest. Utah State probably the best defense they have faced this year. And that includes a Bowling Green defense that is top 10 in the country. They face in the MAC championship game on December 6th. JoJo Natson back to return Weedle's punt. And again, they angle it away from him. Able to get over to make a fair catch at the 40. So a punt of 35 yards. Utah State's defense getting the job done in the second half of the Heisman finalists. Utah State's defense has been the story all year. They've had a good plan tonight, too, Kara Capuano. Guys, thinking about something Utah State defensive coordinator Todd Orlando told us. They know they can't defend it all. They're going to give up some plays to Northern Illinois, but they can't let Jordan Lynch wreck the game, and they've certainly done that so far. Jojo Nats in with a short game. You've kind of got to pick your poison as a defense against Northern Illinois. Are you going to pack it in and go one-on-one -on, -one on the outside? Utah State can because their cover guys are so good. The other thing, though, is the discipline of the front seven. Even when they're bringing five, six on the rush, they're staying in their lanes and make sure they don't overrun the quarterback to allow the big scramble play. Garrettson in for the second down play. NIU shows pressure and brings an extra man. It's picked up, and Swindle's got it for a first down. Rand out of bounds after a dozen. Deshaun Durant there for the tackle, and the guy that's got the long touchdown of the game for the Aggies. And letting them know about it. A little bit too much cushion there allows you, once you get the ball, if you can square up on a defender, you can make the two-way go move on him. It's really tough. you got to close that cushion very quickly once the ball is, a, is in a receiver's hands. Wildcat this time for Marshall on a trick play. Garrettson's got a wide open man. Saw him late. Defense recovers and breaks it up. Travis Van Leeuwen was 15 to 20 yards behind the defense, but Garrettson looked to the wheel instead of the deep route. Yeah, it's really tough. And once the quarterback's got the ball, he's got to find that receiver so far down the field. Just take a look right here. Gone. And the, the problem is he can't find him. He can't see him. All of a sudden, when he realizes he's there, it's too late. The ball can't finish for him. The defenders get there. Oh, my gosh. That, that is always so frustrating from a coaching standpoint. You've got to play. You just can't execute it. Second and ten. Marshall. Stop made by Anthony Wells after four yards, so third and six. We had a play like that one time 
uh, in the Las Vegas Bowl. First play of the game, ran it. The guy was 20 yards deep. The quarterback couldn't see him. Held uh, the ball, held the ball. Where are you? Let's throw the ball. He's wide open. He's out there. Couldn't find him. Happens to the best of us. Third down and six. And I use defense trying to come up with a big stop. They roll Garrettson as Swindle breaks a tackle and gets close to a first down. Very close. This is going to depend on the spot a little bit. Might be a little bit short. And he is fourth down in less than a yard. He'll keep the offense on the field, bring an extra tight end in. A couple of extra offensive linemen. This is like the monster group, the elephant group that Stanford runs. Put some big boys in there. Marshall off the left side, breaking free. Marshall runs through war with the first down to the 15. On fourth and one, he rocks for 24. His longest run of the night. Those type of things don't surprise you. On a fourth and one, both sides sell out. You can see just packing the box inside. If you get held up on the edge at all, then great job by Marshall to find it. And then obviously, who's going to make that tackle? Jimmy Ward. Jake Simonich running over to Sean Durant, giving the key block on that play. First and 10 from the 15. DiMartino. Jamal Bass finished him off. Got four, second and six. DiMartino over 90 yards now. And remember, Coach Wells said pretty, pretty bluntly, if he runs for 100, we're probably going to win this game. And we're approaching that, and it's still quite a bit of the game left. Second and seven. Garrettson pumps the bubble, throws the seam, and gets picked off by Jimmy Ward. And Ward brings it out to the 15. His seventh interception, the max leader in that category, and the first team All-American comes up with a huge takeaway for NIU. Pump screen and go, and the quarterback got a little bit greedy. You can watch him here. He's going to pump fake to the outside. They're faking the wide screen. Both of the wide receivers then stutter block and go up the field. Jimmy Ward was not fooled. He's there, leading tackler, leading interceptor on the season for NIU. Huge break. That's a lot of points off the board. Could be a 14-point swing on this drive. From the 15, they fake the sweep to Brown and come downhill with Stingley. Tyler Fackrell plugged the hole. And Jimmy Ward, you said leading tackler, leading pit guy. What do you think as far as projecting to the next level? There is absolutely no question in my mind he'll go on and play in the NFL. Whether he plays safety, some type of nickel back, he's great on special teams. But a guy that can lead your team in tackles and interceptions is a rare commodity. Started playing football when he was nine years old when his dad told him it was the only way to buy him cheese fries. <laughs> yeah, God, I think a lot of dads better start buying some cheese fries for their kids. Lynch has all kinds of time, but once again, the coverage is good, and Lynch slips. Good in a yard, third and nine. We've yet to see Jordan Lynch really bust one, you know, get out on the edge and get the long run like he does. And that was a perfect opportunity when you get scrambling, people are playing pass defenses when you can make some of your biggest plays. Huskies in the second half, coach. Nine plays, negative two yards. Third down and nine. They bring six. Lynch scrambling. Jordan Lynch cut down. It looks like shy of the sticks. Nick Vigil, Kyler Fackrell combining. It's fourth down and a yard. That was close. That was one of those where he thought he might be able to break it. Nice job with pressure forces him up into the pocket, covers down the field. He tucks it. He just can't quite finish that play. That's great pursuit by the Utah State defense. And the punt team comes out to the chagrin of some of the NIU faithful that have traveled. The reality of those, a lot of game left. Right. You're down one score. If you turn the ball over here and don't make it, you're giving them points. Let's see how they punt here. Van Leeuwen is back instead of Natson. 
And now flag comes in. With the play clock running out. Delay. Offense. Five yards. Fourth down. Now, this is interesting. The defense stayed on the field. They may have had a fake call that if the defense, if they had a punt return team on, they may have run the fake. But since it was a defense, they just let time expire. That'll back them up five. And with that, they bring JoJo Natson back in to return it. They've directionally kicked away from Natson, who's returned two for touchdowns this year. They still fake it. And breaking through tackles for a first down goes Desroy Maxwell. He got hit in the backfield and still able to get eight yards and an NIU first down. Wow. That's, I'm going to tell you what, that's a gutsy play, but the reality is they got what they wanted. They felt they could handle this with the option fake, but this is just a great power run by a guy that was not going to be denied. He didn't want to go back to the sideline and say, Coach, I guess we didn't make it. Tight end and a fullback, one of the unsung heroes of this offense, says Bob Cole. And with Northern Illinois down a touchdown, they rolled the dice. It's a bowl game. They got nothing to lose at this point. They convert with a fifth punt, and we'll have the ball down as scores. We move to the fourth, and the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl.